Alright guys, so what I want to do now is go over kind of a quick and dirty um, texture creation process for this sconce. Um, we've already got a normal map. We now have um, our AO baked. We have our glow baked. Um, and what I've done is I'm just going to create a, a Photoshop document. Um, usually I would load in the, the uh, normal in this, kind of save it out as a, kind of a master, master file. Um, for this texture job we're actually not going to be editing the uh, normal map. I just want to make a quick color and a quick specular map or shininess map for it um, so that we can go in and, and make a new glow, better glow map. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is load up a Photoshop document and I want to include my AO have my glow and then in this case I've just kinda got this scratched looking beat up faded um, uh, metal kinda texture that I'm using um, and this is just gonna be a real quick way to uh, to make the uh, the diffuse and color maps. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my AO and I'm gonna change that to multiply alright and this is gonna cause this, this fade okay so this is what we want to have happen is we want the ambient occlusion to shade our color map um, to kind of show and accentuate all the, the crevices and, and, and things like that. With our glow map, we've kind of got a problem. We have this black background, um, and so it's not going to blend necessarily with um, our background quite the way we want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick mask on this glow map. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say select and select the color range and I'm just going to click on this background back here so I have this nice selection hit OK and then I'm going to click on the button to do a, a, a mask and what you're going to see is it's basically hiding all my glow so if I do control I it flips it and now I can see my glow and I've got a nice nice mask going on alright now that I have the glow I have my uh, ambient occlusion set up now the one thing about this is this is a gnarly looking metal texture so what I'm going to do is I want to break up this kind of bright yellow glow so again what I'm going to do is add a new layer right here and make sure I got white and dark select filter and then I'm going to render some clouds kind of give us this, this kind of thing here let me fill, do that one more time give a little bit different look yeah it's looking pretty good there we go something kind of like this and I'm going to set that to a multiply and so I get this kind of neat looking kind of grodiness to it and then if I hold down alt and put it down what's going to happen is it's going to use the mask from this glow in order to mask that so it doesn't it's not multiplying and clouding everything it's just going to cloud the um, uh, the glow map and then I can edit that too so what I'm going to do is go to layer uh, image adjustments uh, levels. I think levels will probably be best. And just kind of pull the lights and darks, kind of shift it a little bit, um, kind of pull out a little bit. So because it's going to be glowed through. So we just kind of want to create just a, like this little bit of crud per se on the uh, on the map. So there's a real quick kind of dirty mask for it. So this will end up being our color map, okay? Just as it is, pretty good. Um, kind of, kind of start. Now what I'm going to do is create a new group, and this group I'm going to call my spec, okay? So this is going to control our shininess. And all I'm going to do is take these guys here, and I'm just going to duplicate those layers, and put them in spec, so they all kind of tuck away. And let's go ahead and hide everything under it. Now for the spec. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tone down my multiply a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite as prominent. <coughs> Our glow in glow copy, this is going to work okay, but this, we really don't want too much shine to be in front of our glow since it's actually emitting light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask here, create a new level layer, and then just do a simple paint bucket fill, okay, so that it's now blacked out. Okay, uh, change that to multiply. So then that's not going to be shiny at all. Okay, you can tweak this layer that's la later. That's one of the reasons I want to put it on its own 
uh, layer and so you can tweak this later to get shine if, if it'll if it'll show up right. And the last thing I do is go to this metal copy and I really want to do some adjustments to this metal copy. It's just not gonna work this way. So what I'm gonna do is go and adjust a uh, curves layer here. Adjustment. And what I want to do is where this corrosion has happened, I want to go ahead and kind of push that a little darker, make it a little less shiny. And then the areas where the metal is, I want to make the metal a little more shiny. And then we can kind of come in here and tweak um, these values a little bit. Still want to hold on to some of those good grays. There we go. Something, something sort of. along those lines just so that we have kind of a neat looking look to it. Alright, it's going to be different than our diffuse. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is just save all these out. So here's our spec here. So go ahead, file, save as um, Uh, and for the moment I'll just leave it as a JPEG. Uh, that's fine. And then go ahead and enable these. File, save as, call these. Scott's diffuse. All right. And last but not least, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to turn off the metal. And I'm going to disable the layer mask, right? And go to File, Save As. And this is going to be our new Scott's Glow. Okay. So now let's fire up Maya, hook all these connections up. All right, so what I've gone and done as I went ahead and have completed the model of the sconce with the overlapping UVs, um, merged it all together. And now what I want to do is apply a uh, new material. And I'm just going to make a blend. And let's see how these textures are going to look. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the color file. And then what I'm going to do is assign, go ahead and assign a sconce diffuse to it. All right. So then that gives us the first colors. All right, let's go back to our bump mapping and add the bump map to it. So file, tangent space normals, and assign the normal map. So that gives us our, our nice detail. Now what I want to do is go back to our incandescence and let's add our new glow. So our glow with the errors in it, the thick corruption. So now we have our completed model at the moment. All right, now there's lots of stuff you can go in here and tweak and change. Um, oh, our specular, we need to add the specular. So what I'm gonna do is where it says specular color, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, our new our specular channel. So here is our, our specular one that we've modified the diffuse. And as you can see, when I move it across the light, you can see the dark bits there are um, not nearly as shiny as the, the rest of the, the kind of metal, and it kind of adds a nice kind of texture, uh, textured look to the model. Um, we could later go on and add some of that detail into the normal map as well to give it a little more of a bumpy uh, effect. Um, for the moment, this is, this is what we'll just stick with the, the diffuse and the spec. Um, we'll go back through, and there's more options we can do as far as dialing in the amount of shininess or lack thereof with the shader and you can use different shaders um, <coughs> to have more or less um, of a shininess effect um, different maps things like that but for again just for a, a real quick way of doing it um, this will work just fine alright so the last thing I want to do is if we look at the way the sconce is, uh, when we light the sconce, okay, the sconce needs to be lit up. 
Okay, right now, this thing should be glowing and should be casting lighting glow around uh, around the sconce. So the way that we can do that is using global illumination. Uh, Turtle has a nice little built-in global illumination. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bake out our glow so we can have a, a better incandescence map. All right, so bringing up the, the options again, go into Turtle. Let's go ahead to a global illumination. Make sure enable is turned on. We have our final gather. Let's go to baking. And this time, I don't want to use any of our objects. We actually want to use our main object. So it just bakes the selected object. So it's not going to really be a, the source is going to be the, uh, the target this, this time. We just want to bake its own, its own information. So what we need to do is go down to our outputs and change the outputs. Change the outputs to indirect illumination and hit the render button. Let it do its thing. And boom, now we have this map here. But as you can see, there's a lot of gray and other things going on here that I don't think is what we're really wanting. Um, and that's because it's still using the default Maya lights. So what we need to do is add a light to this scene that's not aimed at our uh, sconce and then rebake. So what I'm going to do is go to rendering spotlight and as you can see we now have no light in the scene all right so let's so re-render with, with all the lights kind of turned off And that's going to give us this, okay? Which is nice because it shows us where the indirect illumination is going to be coming coming from. The problem is um, we still don't see our glow, and I'm not seeing any of our texture, okay, along these lit areas. So what we want to change do is change it from indirect to full shading, and then hit the render to see to show what it's going to be shiny and what's not going to be shiny. So what we're trying to do is actually fake the uh, the light in the uh, in the scene because in a game process you're not going to have a light you know actually working there real time casting so what we want to have is it uh, parts of it to be self lit say down a, down a dark hallway so rendering this one we get the starts off with the illumination pass and then you'll see that it's going to start drawing the other parts of the uh, map. So here we have a completed uh, glow bake, which what we want to do is go ahead and save this out. And then go back into Photoshop and reapply it. So back in Photoshop, what we want to do is open our open our newly baked sconce image and then go ahead and slide it over to our multiple texture. So here's our original diffuse with ambient occlusion. We want to add the now baked on sconce and this time what we can do and so what I like to do is take this and add it as almost like a linear dodge add and even though it's not blatant it's subtle but you can see the glow line that's going to be going on around the uh, around the object here. Okay, so that'll be the the shined light that will be affecting the the color map. So what we want to do is save this back out as our color. Diffuse. Just go ahead and resave that. Yes, replace it. All good. And then back into Maya. What we want to do is redo some of these, reassign some of the textures. So the first one will be the color. Just go ahead and reload it. Okay, and that'll give it the change. Okay, and what you should be able to see just from the reload here will be subtle 
yellow and then we want to go to our incandescence and instead of it being the glow we want it to be the glow bake with the extra light so go ahead and open that and now you can really see where the glow light is adding the uh, the extra effect to it so even when we turn the lights out it looks like the lamp is actually affecting the wall sconce itself. You see that? So lights on, we have nice shiny material. Lights off, we have the sconce um, illuminating itself.